climbing is a heuristic search used for mathematical optimization problems in the field of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has come a long way. Things we see in movies are actually attemptable in real life. And the credit goes to none other than the artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithms that has driven this science so far. One such algorithm is the hill climbing algorithm. Hi all, my name is Upasna. And in this session, we are going to learn all about hill climbing in artificial intelligence. But before we begin, let's look at our agenda for today. So we're going to start out with defining and describing hill climbing. We are going to also discuss its state space diagram and a couple of its features. Then we are going to move on to types of hill climbing, followed by a demo. It's a pretty simple demo, pretty simple to follow. We are going to basically understand how hill climbing works using a Python code. Then we're going to discuss a few complexities and pitfalls of the hill climbing algorithm and finally discuss a few applications. Also kindly take up this time to subscribe to us and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from the Edureka YouTube channel. Also don't forget to check out our artificial intelligence certification training, the link to which will be at the description box below. So now without much ado, let's get started. So what is hill climbing? Now hill climbing is a heuristic search used for mathematical optimization problems. It is used in the field of artificial science. And basically this means that if you're given a large set of inputs and a good heuristic function, heuristic as in self-learning function, it tries to find a sufficiently good solution to the problem. Now this solution may not be the global optimal maximum or the best solution for the problem, but it's basically the best possible solution in a very reasonable period of time. This implies that hill climbing solves the problems where we need to maximize or minimize a given real function by choosing values from the given inputs. A very good example of this is the traveling salesman problem where you need to minimize the distance traveled by the salesman. Now the flowchart for hill climbing looks something like this. First of all, you select a current solution, you evaluate that solution, then you pick up a neighboring point or solution, you evaluate the point that you just picked up, then you make a decision, is your new solution better than the original solution? If yes, you select the new solution as the current solution and then carry on the same method. And if no, if your original solution is better, then again, you go back to your step two, you select a new solution from the neighborhood and then you evaluate X and this goes on and on. Now what you see on your screen right now is the algorithm, which is corresponding to the flowchart that I just showed. Basically, as you can see, it is somewhat like a generate and test algorithm, but it somewhat uses a greedy approach to reach a solution. Okay. Now you need to understand what the generate and test algorithm is. So as I mentioned, hill climbing is a variant of the generate and test algorithm. So first what it does is it generates possible solutions. Then it tests that solution or evaluates it to see if it is the expected solution. If the solution has been found, then it quits the loop else. It goes back to step one and selects a new current solution. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Hence, we can call hill climbing as a variant of generate and test algorithm as it takes feedback from the test procedure. And then the feedback is utilized by the generator in deciding the next move in the search space. Another feature is that it uses the greedy approach. So basically at any point in the state space, the search moves in a direction only which optimizes the cost of the function with the hope of finding an optimal solution at the end. So basically it's going to take the best possible way to reach a solution. Now this is a state space diagram of hill climbing. There are different regions in this state space diagram. Now, for those of you who do not know what state space diagram is, it is a graphical representation of a set of states that our search algorithm can reach versus the value of the objective function. The objective function meaning the function which we wish to maximize or minimize. Now here the X axis denotes the state space that is the state or configuration of our algorithm. And Y axis denotes the values of objective function which is corresponding to a particular state. The best solution will be the state space where the objective function has maximum value or the global maximum. 
now there are different regions in this diagram first of all this is our current state it is the region in the state space diagram where we are currently present during the search pretty self-explanatory isn't it next you have the global maxima now this is the best possible state in the state space diagram it is because that at this state the objective function has reached its maximum value next is the local maxima now this is a state which is better than its neighboring states however there exists a state which is better than this particular maxima which is the global maxima obviously we've just discussed it this state is better because here the value of the objective function is higher than its neighbors but obviously we know it is not the best possible solution given reasonable time this is a good enough solution okay another kind of maxima is a flat maxima yes it is also known as a plateau now it is a flat region of state space where the neighboring states have the same value as you can see it is a straight line neighboring points are also on the same level then there is something you can see in the beginning it's called a ridge it is a region which is higher than the neighbor but it itself is a slope it's a special kind of local maximum and apart from that that area in the front is a shoulder now if the plateau would not have descended from its sharp point and gone up it would have been called something known as a shoulder it's basically an uphill edge from the plateau yes with that we've come to the end of the introduction section let's move on to types of hill climbing so first of all we have simple hill climbing now simple hill climbing is the simplest way to implement a hill climbing algorithm it only evaluates the neighbor node state at a time and selects the first one which optimizes the current cost and sets it as a current state it only checks its one successor state and if it finds that it is better than the current state then it moves to the next state else it will be in the same state it is less time consuming than the other types of hill climbing but it also gives a less optimal solution and the solution is not guaranteed now here is the algorithm for simple hill climbing first you evaluate the initial state if it is the goal state then you get success and stop step 2 you have to loop until a solution is found or there is no new operator left to apply step 3 you select and apply an operator to the current state and finally you check the new state now if the new state is a goal state then you return success and quit else if it is better than the current state then assign new state as the current state or else if it is not better than the current state then you return to step 2 and finally you exit that loop as i said this might be less time consuming but it also gives the less optimal solution and the solution is not guaranteed next you have the steepest ascent hill climbing now this algorithm is a variation of the simple hill climbing algorithm where it examines all the neighboring nodes of the current state and selects one neighbor node which is closest to the goal state now this algorithm consumes more time as it searches for multiple neighbors so first you evaluate the initial state if it is the goal state then you return success and stop else you make the state which is currently where you are as the initial state pretty simple it is much like the previous type of hill climbing next you loop until a solution is found or the current state does not change now the conditions to this are many so let's start with the first one let success be a state such that any successor of the current state will be better than it next for each operator that applies to the current state first apply the new operator and generate a new state evaluate the new state if it is the goal state then return it and quit else compared to success state now if this is better than the success state then set this as the new state of success if success is better than the current state then set current state to success and then you can exit now what this does is it takes more time but since it is more complex you are most likely to get a better solution now apart from these two there's a third kind of hill climbing it is the stochastic hill climbing now this algorithm does not examine for all its neighbors before moving rather the search algorithm selects one neighbor node at random and decides whether to choose it as a current state or examine another state that is it it does not go around searching 
the entire graph for a better node it just picks up points at random and decides to choose whether it is a better solution or not now a great way to optimize this particular type of hill climbing is to take as many possibilities in the bracket as possible it might take time but this guarantees you a better solution so as we discussed hill climbing is the most simple implementation of a genetic algorithm it completely gets rid of concepts such as population and crossover instead it focuses on the ease of implementation it has faster iterations compared to most traditional genetic algorithms but in return it is less thorough obviously so even though it is not a challenging problem hello world is still a pretty good introduction so that is what we are going to do and we are going to execute it using python code so how does it work hill climbing works in a very simple way we can actually show it in a step by step list so you start out with an empty or a random solution this is your best solution make a copy of the solution and mutate it slightly now what you do is you evaluate this new solution if it is better than the best solution we replace the best solution with this one if not you go to step 2 and repeat so basically to evolve a solution to a problem you need to write three functions you write a random solution you evaluate the solution and return a score and you mutate the solution in a random manner pretty easy isn't it so for hello world let's start with a basic outline of the hill climbing algorithm here you are trying to generate a random solution and you're naming it the best solution next in your while loop you are trying to print the best scores so far while comparing your new solution to the previously best solution that there is next we are generating a random solution this function needs to return a random solution and in the hill climbing algorithm you make this a separate function now making this a separate function might be too much abstraction but if you want to change the structure of your code to be a population based genetic algorithm it will be very helpful so here again we are giving a parameter of the length equal to 11 to generate the random solution and then we are returning the string that we are getting next you evaluate the solution the target of our algorithm is producing the string hello world so our evaluation function is going to return a distance metric between two strings now this is a simple way to do it the function here will return the absolute difference of our solution to the target and finally you mutate the solution now in genetic algorithms mutating a solution basically means randomly changing it in a small way in the context of this particular code this means that you change one of the letters randomly so that is what is happening in this piece of code now one last thing we need before our code is ready is the copy function but our solution is just a list of characters which is easily copied in python so let's get all of this code together tie it all together in a state that is ready to run now this is what the code looks like when you tie it all together i'm using a trusty jupyter notebook for a complete jupyter notebook tutorial you can refer to the link given in the description bar so now let's move on to our code as you can see all the parts are there we're starting out with generating a random solution then evaluating that particular solution mutating that solution to generate the best random solution and here is our base code now let's bring it here and let's try to run it here we are running all the cells one by one and once you run it you should be greeted with this particular output see how it is randomly changing the best score so far till you finally reach the solution that you were waiting for and that is hello world it's right here it starts out with these random solution it has taken 433 attempts to reach to our ideal solution and that my friends is how the hill climbing algorithm works moving on let's look at a few complexities and problems in different regions in hill climbing now hill climbing cannot reach the optimal best state global maximum if it enters 
any of these following regions. First up, we have local maximum. At a local maximum, all neighboring states have values which is worse than the current state. So since hill climbing uses a greedy approach, it will not move to the worst state and it will definitely terminate itself at the local maximum. The process will end even though a better solution may exist. Now to overcome such a problem, you can utilize a backtracking technique. Maintain a list of visited states and if the search reaches an undesirable state, it can backtrack to the previous configuration and explore a new path. Next, it's a plateau. Now on a plateau, all the neighbors have the same value. Hence, it is not possible to select the best direction. Now to overcome this problem, what you do is you make a big jump. Randomly select a state far away from the current state and chances are that you will land at a non-plateau region. Next is a ridge. Now any point on a ridge can look like a peak because movement in all possible direction is downwards. Hence the algorithm stops where it reaches this state. Now to overcome this problem, use two or more rules before testing. It implies moving in several directions at once to test which one is the best direction. Now let's move on to a few applications of the hill climbing algorithm. Now the hill climbing technique can be used to solve many problems where the current state allows for an accurate evaluation function such as the network flow, traveling salesman problem, eight queens problem and integrated circuit design. Hill climbing is used also in inductive learning methods. It can be used in robotics for coordination amongst multiple robots in a team. And these are only to name a few. With that, I come to the end of my session. My name is Upasana. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!